He said you've lost you lost some close friends to drugs. Yeah. Starting not it's not to scare you. Yeah, I'm, I'm most scared of living and dying. It's hard, if I'm honest. It's a hard it's life. To go to bed and pray to not wake up. It's now over 100 years since drugs were first banned in Britain. It's a century since we made this really fatal decision to take addicts and punish them and make them suffer because we believe that would deter them and give them an incentive to stop. But recently, I was looking at the, all the addicts I've spoke to and tried to figure out if there was somewhere I could help them. I soon realised there were so many questions I just didn't know the answer to. One of them being, why do we carry on with this approach which clearly doesn't seem to be working? And more importantly, is there a better way to tackle addiction problems? Coincidentally, this week the UK government rolled out plans to open facilities for safer consumption of illegal drugs. But is this the way forward? I think if this money could be spent differently, like creating jobs for addicts or giving them therapy and reconnecting them with or into society instead of treating them like criminals, do you think it would be more helpful or easier to, to get off drugs that way? Definitely, because you, you need something to do, you need to occupy your mind. When, especially when you're coming off drugs, um, it's hard. And if you've not got something to replace the drug, you just set yourself up for failure. Yeah, you coming off, and well, coming off it's the easy part, it's staying off it. Yeah. That's the, that's the worst part. And what, what drug, what's your drug of choice? Heroin and crack cocaine. So let's start with what we think we know. Many of us believe that because there are chemical hooks in the likes of heroin, that if you took this for a while, your body would become dependent on them hooks, start to physically need them, and this is how we become heroin addicts. But this just doesn't happen. And it was Professor Bruce Alexander who proved this with an incredible experiment. First, he took a rat and put it in a cage with two water bottles. One is just water, the other is water laced with heroin. Almost every time you run this experiment, the rat will become obsessed with the drugged water and keep coming back for more until eventually it kills itself. But in the 1970s, Professor Bruce Alexander noticed something odd about this experiment. The rat is put in the cage all alone. It has nothing to do but to take the drug. He wondered what would happen if we'd done this differently. So he built Rat Park, which is basically heaven for rats. He built a cage filled with rat toys, lots of tunnels to run around, plenty of friends to play with, and have a lover, if you like. Everything a rat would ever want. They would still have the drugged water and the normal water bottles. But here's the interesting thing. In Rat Park, rats hardly ever used the drug water. None of them ever used it compulsively, and none of them ever overdosed. But maybe this is a quirk of rats. Well, healthily, there was a human experiment along the same lines, the Vietnam War, where 20% of American troops in Vietnam were using a lot of heroin. People back home were really worried because they thought there would be hundreds of thousands of junkies on the streets of the USA when the war was over. But a study followed the soldiers home and found something interesting. They didn't go to rehabs. They didn't even go into withdrawal. In fact, 95% of them just stopped when they got home. So what does this teach us? It tells us that what if addiction isn't about your chemical hooks? What if addiction is about your cage? About an adaptation to your environment? Do, do you think if this money could be spent differently, like creating jobs for addicts or giving them therapy and reconnecting them with or into society instead of treating them like criminals, do you think it would be more helpful or easier to, to get off drugs that way? Definitely, because you, you need something to do, you need to occupy your mind. When, especially when you're coming off drugs, um, it's hard. And if you've not got something to replace the drug, you just set yourself up for failure. You need something to wake up for, don't you? Yeah, you, yeah. you? You want to be welcome back into society, don't you? And any help with that is good. Yeah. Is treating addicts with shame and punishment, putting barriers between them reconnecting with society? This system clearly makes addiction worse to me. With me, I started using drugs as a way to block everything out. Yeah. Like, I took the pain away, but yeah. if I'm being honest, and this is to everyone, coming from someone who's done it for a long time, stay away from it because it might, might help at the time, but in the long run, it just makes things a hundred times worse. 
in the year 2000, Portugal had one of the worst drug problems in the world and they decided to do the exact opposite of the system we're used to. The Prime Minister at the time, Antonio Guterres, decided enough was enough and tried something different. He decriminalised all drugs. But he took all the money Portugal used to spend on cutting addicts off and disconnecting them and spend it instead on reconnecting them into society. They invested in a massive programme of job creation for addicts and micro loans for addicts to set up own businesses. The goal was every addict in Portugal had something to get up out of bed for in the morning. Since this decriminalisation bill, drug related deaths have remained below the EU average since 2001 and the number of prisoners sentenced for drugs has fallen from 40% to 15%. I think Portugal has set a positive example for what can be done when drug policies prioritise health rather than criminalisation. What's your biggest regret? Taking drugs. Taking drugs. So I think it's so important to remember that the opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The opposite of addiction is connection.